The next stage comes with a lot of responsibility and independence that you wouldn't have been used to from GCSE. I would need to make decisions about what I'd study, where I'd study. I had great control over my time and I was expected to take more responsibility for my learning than I was in my GCSEs. Hello there, I'm Priscilla and I've been reflecting on my transition from GCSE to A-levels, what I wish I had done better, what I wish I had known at the time. And I hope that by sharing my experience that it helps make this transition easier for you. I'll break this video into a couple of questions. If I miss out anything, just drop it in the comment section. So what should I do in the interim? So in this time that I have before starting my A-level studies or going to sit for? The first thing you can do is to go through your um, specification. So find out what board your sit form or your college is going to be using and then find out what courses or what subjects it is you're going to study. The specification is basically a document that shows you everything you will be studying on that specific course. It shows you all you need to know so that when you start studying you don't spend too much time on things that you might not necessarily have to know for your exams and also so that you don't neglect things that you have to know for your exams. Secondly, most um, sit formal colleges tend to give you some pre-assigned work and I urge you to do it, okay? It just helps to give you a taster of what you'll be doing when it comes to A-level work. Most of it will be like GCSE things that you already know with one or two things and um, being like things that they expect you to do some research on. Don't spend an hour a day every single day. You do 10 minutes every weekday. When you do this pre-assigned work and you see that you're not enjoying the subject, maybe that might be the time to reconsider if these are the subjects you really want to study. Because mind you, you will be doing A-levels for the next two years of your life and the two main keys when it comes to choosing your A-levels. It's a subject you enjoy and it's a subject that you're good at because if you're missing any one of those factors you'll find that you'll struggle somewhere along the way which I did for one of the subjects I chose wrongly. I'll go into that in a bit more detail soon. What advice would you give to someone when it comes to choosing their A-level subjects? If you know what career you'd like to go into in the future, let's say you want to do something like medicine or dentistry then you should work backwards. So for those careers you definitely have have to do biology and chemistry because that's what um, most universities tend to require. So those two subjects might be a no-brainer when it comes to choosing but your third subject could be anything else and this is where it comes to choosing something that you enjoy and you know that you're going to be good at doing. For me I'd come to find out that the last subject I chose which was maths was the wrong choice. I made that decision partly because like most people who apply to dental medical schools do the normal traditional combo maths chem bio so i just thought oh my last subject i might as well just choose maths and don't get me wrong i loved gcse maths like i got an a start in that which was great however a level maths is very very different to gcse maths like why was i doing mechanics i didn't like physics so anything remotely like similar to physics just spins my head and that's kind of what mechanics is like. I was really good at stats but I did not like mechanics and I found that like that was affecting me like I wasn't looking forward to going to my class so at that point I was not enjoying it. I spent about a month literally in the maths class and then I spoke to my teachers, I spoke to my parents and people in like older years and I was like I'm not enjoying maths like I love GCSE maths but I don't like A-level maths, I don't like mechanics and I think if I keep going on this way I'm not going to get an A in the end and for medical or dental school you need at least three A's to get in okay well typically there's some contextual offers and things like that but typically you need at least three A's to get in I was like no I need to change subjects and so I changed subjects I dropped maths and then took on um, economics so at that point I became the last person to join the economics class I had so much to catch up on I had to stay after school to go through things with like my teacher and he was so good. His name was Mr. Dicker. Like, wherever you are, thank you. You literally saved my life. He'd stay after school to help me catch up on things that I didn't know. I knew to go for economics because one, I enjoyed economics. Like, I enjoyed listening to things pertaining to economics. And also, I had done business studies at GCSE level and I really liked it. I liked the economic side of it. And I had, like, studied economics here and there before as well. So when I was looking for my choices for, like, a third subject, I was like... Why not? I like maths. Economics obviously has loads of maths um, interspersed in it, but it's not to a level of what mechanics was giving me. Like, I don't like physics. I don't like anything remotely close to mechanics or physics. I just don't want to hear it. I would then come to find out that that was the best decision I made. I got an A star in economics and the second highest mark in my entire sixth form 
even though I joined the class late and I had to catch up, like I really worked hard when it comes to economics because so I knew I needed that last A to get in. Don't be afraid. If you start your A-levels and you're finding that you're struggling with a subject, most sit forms anyway have like a two week grace period where you can test out your subjects and then change if you're not confident. Like I went past that two weeks grace period. Like I'm so happy that they even allowed me to change. I pleaded my case. I was like, if you lot let me stay in math, I'm not going to get an A in it. Call up your universities and make sure that if you're dropping maths and taking another subject that it's not going to affect your possibility or chances of getting into that course you want to get into in universities. I called up my unis and asked them if I do um, chemistry, biology, economics, will I get into dentistry or medicine? They're like, yeah, all you need is bio and chem. The last one can be anything. So at that point, I knew that I had the go ahead to drop it. So just make sure you've done all that background work. And if you're really struggling and you think you need to change courses, go for it. If you don't know what course you want to study in university, then you wouldn't know what course you want to choose as your A-level subjects. What you can do is to choose any of the facilitating subjects. Most universities prefer a range of A-levels and they've given them the term and um, facilitating subjects if you do a quick google search you'll get a list and then you can make a decision as to subjects you think you do best in and what subjects you think you'd enjoy how did a level compare to my experience of um, being at school or doing gcses the biggest difference for me was that i had quite a lot of spare time compared to my gcse timetable gcse is a set timetable like you're supposed to be here at this moment you just go there for a levels it was not like that i had like at least one free period in my timetable every day like at least like an hour a day that I just had to myself and then I had to decide what to do with myself with my learning in that hour when I started I was I'm not even gonna lie most of the time I was just there like talking to my friends just wasting making new friends and things like that which isn't bad but you'll find that it's not a sustainable way to use that free um, session you have in your timetable I then came to like draw up a, a timetable for subjects that I would study in my free periods and that helped me because I, sometimes I could do my my homework within that time and that really helped to um, take off or to ease off the pressure when it comes to how much work I had to do um, at home or when it came to how long I had to stay after school. I realised that asking questions is so important when it comes to sixth form like no question is ever stupid don't let anybody intimidate you if you're in class and you don't understand something ask I don't care how stupid you think it is most times if you have that question at least one more person in that class has the same question but they're not confident enough to ask if there's something bothering you ask make sure you clarify everything at every stage before you move on to the next topic there's no way you're going to build a good understanding if you lack the foundation to what you're being taught if you're shy to ask in class say when everybody is left and ask your teacher there's a lot less spoon feeding when it comes to um, a levels you be set homework and you won't really be chased for it like you were in GCSE so it's up to you to actually do your work and show up to class prepared to make sure that you're on board with the whole class because you will be left behind if you don't do your work if you don't have anything for teachers to mark to give you feedback on you'll literally be left behind what were my biggest challenges when it came to um, completing my A-level so for me it was finding time especially in year 13 to study new content and also to study um year 12 content at first we used to have m2 exams so an as exam and then a2 exam so you'd get an exam like an official exam at the end of year 12 and then one more at the end of year 13 so you didn't have to learn two years worth of a level work to get your final grade but now it's a linear system so you get tested at the end of year 13 which means you're being tested on everything um, from year 12 and year 13 as well so making time in year 13 to make sure that i was learning that new content that i was being taught and also going back to year 12 to revise all of what i had been taught a year ago was a bit of a task so what i found worked for me was creating a rigid timetable and setting time and days for when i would be studying year 12 content and when i'd be studying year 13 content as well because you don't want to know everything you're being taught in year 13 and forget about everything you've learned in year 12. another challenge was coming to find out that not all of my work would be good straight away for me i went to a grammar school so obviously you know that you need to get good grades to get into grammar school so everybody over there is smart you go in you expect 
expect him to be doing well in every single test and then you do like a first test and it doesn't go so well and you're like ouch I thought I was smart but maybe I'm not that smart and it's not only you who's going to be feeling that way so many people will be feeling that way as well so it's just that emotional psychological part that comes into play as well don't feel down if your first few tests don't go well if you're struggling with anything ask for help stay after school do some work get your teacher to mark you just things like that and remind yourself that this is a two-year journey and you're only just starting you have so much time and so many other chances to get things right so don't beat yourself down too much if you're struggling at the start okay one thing i also struggled with a little bit was time management because for me i was applying to dentistry or medicine at that point um so in year 13 i'd come to find out that like i had to do all of my extra uni prep stuff in that same time i had to do my ucat preparation i had to work on my personal statement to prepare myself for interviews i had to go to like open days and things like that it's like so much especially if you're applying to a course like medicine and dentistry it's so much background work you have to do at the same time as you preparing for and revising for your a level so it can seem a bit much and that is where um, time management comes into play setting up a timetable knowing how to use your free time so you could use your free time in year 13 for like practicing new cat questions and things like that should just know how to manage your time will really help you when it comes to incorporating all of that so how did i go about managing my time when it came to revision and exam preparation at the end of each topic i tried to make sure that i understood everything before i moved on if i didn't understand anything at the end of a topic i'd make a note of it and go to my teachers and like ask them like to iron things out make sure you've ironed step a out before you go on to step b because by the time you get to d you'll be confused okay and then i'll do a past paper question on it if i got it right great i'll just i'll still read over like the mark scheme if i didn't get it right i'll go through the mark scheme see where i went wrong read the examiner report to see if other people got it wrong as well and yeah and improve upon that with the feedback i got from the examiner report in things like economics i'd write essays so i'll do past papers with like essay like 25 markers and things like that and get my teachers to mark them you're a bit more lenient with yourself when it comes to marking your really big essays you can mark an a marker no no biggie but when it comes to marking a 25 marker your teacher might be a bit more a bit more pedantic like a bit more strict when it comes to marking it that's what you need to know because that's how it will be marked unfortunately in your a levels when it comes to revision as well you want to start early guys you can't wait until the last month before a levels to try and cram everything to your head firstly it's just not healthy it's not good for you and secondly it might not work like you'll wear yourself down doing revision for every subject you're studying at least half an hour every day should be perfectly fine making sure that you're revising um different subjects all together okay because focusing on only one subject for the whole week will make you feel really good about it but then you move on to the next week and start focusing on the next subject and then when you come back the following week you'll find that oh everything you learned has gone out the window so if you want to study uh, math today do about half an hour extra today tomorrow do chemistry the next day do biology come back to math so that you constantly remember the things that you're studying so just stay in the routine of studying all of your a-level subjects together when it comes to revising make sure you're using examiner reports they're basically telling you what the examiners want to see and what they do not want to see and most of them have examples of what students have written in their exams and they're showing you don't do a don't do b it's such a good way to study i know that most people swear by past papers and mark schemes and they end there don't stop there most importantly take breaks off okay you're not a machine you're a human being you want to do well yeah but take days off okay have like a day after school where you just don't revise you don't do anything make sure on the weekends that you're meeting your friends you're going to the gym whatever helps you to de-stress do it and moving on to the next question now how did my experience of ma levels prepare me for university so one big thing was the amount of independence and the amount of responsibility i had to take for myself when it came to my learning people won't really chase you like that in a levels well they might one or two teachers but when you come to uni like people really won't chase you for anything obviously if you're like finding any difficulties you're struggling with anything they're like pastoral services you can reach out to your lecturers and stuff but people literally won't chase you for you to submit your work if a deadline is set and the deadline comes and you haven't submitted 
you'll be graded a zero like that's just it it's that simple and also a levels are a time where you expect it to juggle a few subjects at the same time even though in uni you're going to be studying one course the different aspects of the course so different modules that you have to make sure you're juggling at the same time so it was it was quite similar to a levels in that sense that i had to study um different aspects of a course at the same time to make sure I wasn't slacking on any part of the course. When it comes to the lifestyle part as well, so university is not all about studying, it's not all about going to lectures. There's so many activities that you can do, there's so many societies that you can join. That's why I think it's important that even though you're studying for A-levels, that you still have a life outside of that, that you do what you enjoy. If you dance, keep dancing. If you go to the gym, keep going to the gym don't be like me i cancelled my gym membership when it got like closer to a levels that's a story for another day but yeah don't do it like if you have good time management there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be able to do things outside of a levels so then to the final question looking back what advice would i give to my younger self about to study a levels so the first thing i'd say to little priscilla is work out how you learn best okay what technique is good for you because what might work for my friends might not work for me. Work out how you learn best and utilise it to your advantage. It's much, much easier to study when you're playing to your strengths. Do your work earlier rather than later. Don't wait for exams to revise. And try your best. Do all that you can. Look, at the end of the two-year course, when those exam results come out, you'll have peace when you know regardless of what results you get, you'll have peace in yourself knowing that you literally did your best. But if you don't try and you know you have not tried, you'll literally beat yourself down so much on that day when you open that brown envelope, okay? So do your best, try your best as much as you can. So the second thing, make sure that you keep yourself in the routine of studying, of revising, okay? You should not have down periods where you haven't revised for like two months and then try to cram everything in a day or a week before your uh, mock exams. Your brain can't take that much overload in such a short period of time. So make sure that you're training yourself, you're, you're building the habit of constantly revising. Even if it's half an hour a day, it will make a difference, trust me. I wish I had done that. The penultimate thing I'd say is to take care of your mental health. Guys, you are an A-level student, yes. You're trying to get into uni, you're trying to get the grace again to your apprenticeship, whatever that might be. But you can't go further if you're not good up here. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Have some downtime. Do what makes you happy aside of studying A-levels, okay? A-levels can be daunting, it can be difficult, it can be hard. But make sure that even in the midst of this whole chaos that calls itself the A-level career, that you're still taking care of your mentor. And last but not least, ask for help guys ask for help be it mental health issues be it things you don't understand a topic you just can't get your head around ask for help don't treat your teachers like they're like ebola don't avoid your teachers chase them anything to do with your mental i'm sure the most um sit forms have got um, a pastoral service that you can use go speak to someone seek counseling just make sure you're taking care of yourself holistically that's that from me this is everything i wish i had known and everything that I would say to younger Priscilla if I was writing a letter to her. Obviously that won't happen because I don't have a time machine and I can't go back in time. And honestly, I don't want to go back in time because I don't want to do my A-levels again. Um, I'm happy all that is done. Hopefully you find this helpful as well to you if you're struggling with anything at this point or if you're a bit anxious about starting your A-level career. So all the best with this new journey. Enjoy it. Enjoy those two years of your life if you're starting or if you're in the middle of it. Make sure you're taking Taking care of yourself and um, whilst you're on this journey as well this too shall pass honestly it will pass away and you'll look back and be like whew a levels was a myth if there's anything that i didn't touch on let me know in my comments you've got this there's two years that you can do if i could do my a levels and get through it and get good grades and get into my desired course you can absolutely do it good luck and ASAP.